Amidst the opulent splendor of Dubai's most extravagant establishment, the Burj Al Arab, a clandestine meeting unfolded involving some of the globe's most prominent international criminals. The date was July 15, 2017, and Daniel Kinahan's wedding played host to an assembly of underworld elites. Little did they suspect that they were under surveillance. Who comprised this nefarious gathering? And how did a joyous wedding transform into the prelude to Dubai, losing its status as a safe haven for the world's most sought-after fugitives? Join us as we delve into this story. On July 15, 2017, at the illustrious Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai, renowned as one of the world's most prestigious accommodations, a wedding unfolded that would have profound and far-reaching consequences. The groom in question was none other than Daniel Kinahan, a prominent figure within a notorious Irish criminal family. Daniel, along with his father, Christy Dapper Don Kinahan, his brother Christy Jr., and a network of numerous associates, collectively constituted the Kinahan Organized Crime Group. Their notoriety stemmed from their involvement in activities such as large-scale drug smuggling across international borders, arms trafficking, money laundering, and their infamous feud with the Hutch Gang in Ireland. One year prior to this extravagant wedding, Daniel Kinahan had a near brush with infamy during a now legendary incident at Dublin's Regency Hotel in February 2016. During a weigh-in for a boxing match, a group of individuals disguised as Garda officers attempted to assassinate him. Intriguingly, one of the suspects had adopted the guise of a woman. Fortunately for Daniel, the intended target, he had departed the scene just moments before the attack took place. While Daniel Kinahan survived the attack, one of his associates, David Byrne, was not as fortunate. This tragic event sparked a feud that prompted the Kinahan family to relocate from Ireland, first to Amsterdam in Spain, and eventually to Dubai. Now, let's revisit the wedding itself. At first glance, weddings may seem like commonplace occurrences, celebrated every day. However, what set Daniel Kinahan's wedding apart was the level of scrutiny it attracted, particularly from the American Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA. What made this wedding so intriguing? Well, it wasn't just any wedding. The guest list held the key to its significance, proving to be an invaluable asset for law enforcement agencies worldwide. In essence, this event unwittingly exposed a sprawling global criminal network, all without the participants themselves being aware of the intense scrutiny they were under. It was at this juncture that the DEA's attention honed in on a criminal network later christened as the Super Cartel. So what exactly was this enigmatic Super Cartel and who were its members? The concept of this super cartel was undeniably intriguing. Unlike the conventional narrative of large criminal groups vying for supremacy, the members of this cartel had devised a different strategy. They recognized that by pooling their resources and expertise, they could achieve greater success collectively. Each member brought something unique to the table. One might possess unrivaled knowledge of smuggling routes, another could boast invaluable connections in South America, while yet another excelled in large-scale money laundering. Together, they formed a formidable alliance that yielded remarkable results. Furthermore, a significant advantage of this unified approach was the ability to make bulk purchases at reduced prices, thereby enhancing their profit margins considerably. During the wedding event, the DEA agents identified several key figures at the forefront of the super cartel. These included Eden G, who served as the head of the Tito and Dino cartel, Ridwan Tagi, an influential figure in Dutch criminal history, Raffaele Imperiale, a master of money laundering, and naturally, Daniel Kinahan himself. Aiden G, as the leader of the Tito and Dino cartel, earned a place among the DEA's list of the world's top 50 smugglers. In 2017 alone, law enforcement seized over 14 tons of cocaine linked to Eden. He boasted extensive connections in Peru, making him a major buyer of Peruvian cocaine and nearly monopolizing the market for all cocaine produced in the country. Beyond cocaine smuggling, Eden G was also under suspicion for his involvement in the smuggling of vast quantities of raw materials used in the production of amphetamines. Meanwhile, Ridwan Tagi held the title of the godfather of the Mokro Mafia in the Netherlands and wielded significant influence over the ports of Rotterdam and Antwerp. These two ports served as pivotal entry points for smugglers seeking to infiltrate Europe with their illicit shipments of narcotics. In a twist to the story, Tagi's former lawyer, Inez Weski, later alleged that the Netherlands had furnished Dubai with fabricated information connecting Tagi to Iran in an effort to expedite his arrest and extradition. And so, the first member of the super cartel was apprehended in Dubai. But what many may not know, 
is that the Dutch police came incredibly close to arresting Daniel Kinahan during their pursuit of Tagi. In June 2019, while conducting their investigation, Dutch law enforcement surveilled two controversial lawyers from Amsterdam who were in a meeting with their client, Khalid J. in Dubai. Khalid J. had affiliations with Gwinnett Martha and other key figures within the Mokro Mafia. During this meeting, a fourth individual joined the gathering, wearing a cap and glasses as a disguise. According to Dutch authorities, they believed this person to be Ridwan Tagi, and they promptly requested that the Dubai police arrest him on the spot. However, Dubai authorities refused to comply, asserting that the person in question was not Tagi but rather Daniel Kinahan. They dismissed the request, leaving one to ponder the potential ramifications had they acted differently and arrested Daniel at that moment. Nevertheless, even with Tagi's arrest, the other members of the super cartel did not hastily depart the city, signaling that the intrigue was far from over. Less than two years later, the super cartel's structure continued to erode as its second member was apprehended in Dubai. This time, it was Raffaele Imperiali's turn. He held the dubious distinction of being the second most wanted man in Italy, and in a dramatic turn of events in mid-August 2021, his worst nightmare came to fruition when he was arrested. Subsequently, he was extradited to Italy on March 25, 2022, marking a significant blow to the super cartel. As the walls closed in on the criminal network, speculation from various news outlets and police reports suggested that Raffaele Imperiale's arrest played a pivotal role in Daniel Kinahan's decision to vacate Dubai in September 2022. He likely observed the escalating law enforcement efforts and chose to make a strategic move before he, too, found himself in handcuffs. Around the same time, Dubai entered into a liaison agreement with Europol, potentially further motivating Kinahan's departure. Dubai's police force was actively apprehending criminal figures, and the city's landscape was shifting rapidly. Notably, the next member in line to face an unwelcome surprise was Eden, who was arrested in November 2022 as part of Operation Desert Light. This large-scale operation resulted in the arrests of 48 individuals across Dubai, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and Spain. However, the story takes a fascinating turn as just two months after his arrest, Eden found himself released. The question that arises is, why was he released so swiftly? The situation surrounding Eden's swift release, despite being one of the most wanted individuals globally and allegedly responsible for smuggling vast quantities of illicit goods, is indeed perplexing. Various news reports suggested that delays in the Netherlands' extradition paperwork were to blame for his release, but a spokesman from the Dutch public prosecution disputed these claims, stating that they were still investigating what had gone wrong. It remains a highly questionable turn of events. In the end, the super cartel was dismantled. Ridwan Tagi faces the likelihood of a life sentence in the Netherlands. Raffaele Imperiali is looking at a lengthy prison term and has even chosen to cooperate with Italian authorities. Eden, following his release, has disappeared and his whereabouts remain unknown. Daniel Kinahan's location is also shrouded in mystery, with speculation placing him in Kazakhstan, Iran, or possibly still in Dubai, but continuously on the move. The fact that their whereabouts remain unknown serves to their advantage. Nevertheless, the $5 million reward for Daniel's capture looms over him, and sources from the Garda have expressed confidence that the net is tightening, making it increasingly difficult for him to find safe havens. It appears to be only a matter of time before the noose tightens further, the Kinahan wedding served as a stark revelation of what many law enforcement agencies had suspected for some time. Dubai had become a sanctuary for the world's most wanted criminals. The extravagant event in 2017 was a tipping point that prompted a global crackdown on this phenomenon, dismantling the illusion of invincibility in Dubai and setting off a chain of actions. Fast forward to nearly six years later, and Dubai has made significant strides in addressing this issue with approximately 500 international fugitives arrested in just two years. This is an astonishing figure, and it's clear that they are far from finished. Nevertheless, the whereabouts of Adin G and Daniel Kinahan remain a lingering question. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching this video. As always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, as it greatly supports its content. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.